Howdy gang, in today's episode of Pool School, I am going to deliver as promised. This episode today is on how to convert your pop-up system pool into a stay-in pool vacuum pool. So what do you say we dive right in? Okay, before we go any further, I want to remind you to like and subscribe to this channel and share it with any friends you have that have their own pools and are looking to save some money by taking care of them pools themselves. So, you have decided that you don't like your pop-up system, you found that it's inefficient, and now you've decided that you're going to convert your pool to a vacuum, okay? I get it, and I agree with you. Congratulations, good decision, okay? By the way, if you have not already purchased a vacuum or chosen a vacuum that you want to use for your pool, may I recommend and highly suggest that you watch my video on pool vacuums. I go over the different kind of vacuums there are and also share with you my favorite one. Suffice it to say, to make a long story short, my favorite one currently on the market is called The Pool Cleaner, okay? The Pool Cleaner, and you can find it online. There's a two-wheel version that is for regular play pools. That's pools without a deep end, okay? And then there's a four-wheel version that is for pools with a deep end, or we call them in Arizona, diving pools, okay? So you'd want the four-wheel version for that. So that's all I'm gonna say about vacuums on this video. So you've already determined that you have made the decision to change over to a vacuum and you've ordered and purchased a vacuum and it's sitting in your house or it's in your hands as you speak, okay? Remember this, you're going to have to convert your pool by disabling your pop-ups. I'll talk to you about that in a moment. And then you're also gonna understand this. This is kind of important. When you convert a pop-up pool to a vacuum pool, you are going to lose most, if not all, of the function of the skimmer, meaning skimming the surface and pulling leaves and debris into that skimmer basket. Because you're going to use the suction port for the skimmer to directly plug your vacuum hose into, okay? So keep that in mind. There are ways that can help a little bit, and you'll see that as we go about with the conversion. But for the most part, you're gonna lose most of your, your skimmer's function, okay? But to me, it's, it's a good trade-off getting the efficiency of a vacuum. And most of my clients completely agree with me. Okay, before I get into how to disable your pop-ups, I wanna to talk to you about what comes with your vacuum. When you get your vacuum and you've ordered it, okay, and this, the one that I've gotten is the pool cleaner. It comes with a few different things, all right? It comes with this, usually, which is basically a vacuum hose port. This, again, is if you have a vacuum line that's dedicated or suction dedicated to the vacuum itself, and then it comes with a little port like this. Most of them have this already in them if you have a dedicated vacuum line. But you're not gonna need this, really, unless you wanna replace a dedicated vacuum line, okay? It also comes with this, and this is really important. This is an adapter. This adapter, you notice I haven't even opened it yet. This adapter is what you're gonna plug into the hole for the suction in the skimmer in order to create a, a correct size opening for the vacuum hose to fit into, okay? So that's really, really important that you keep this in mind. You might have to use it. Now, if the suction port for the skimmer is not uh, too big, you can plug the hose directly into it, okay? Also, the vacuum usually comes with something that looks like this. This is basically an adjuster. This basically bleeds off some of the suction that's pulling from the skimmer. Remember, this is plugged into this, like this, and the hose is plugged into here, okay? You've got a lot of suction coming from here. Sometimes too much, especially if you don't have an adjusting valve for the suction at the pump, then you're gonna wanna use this. This allows you to dial out by screwing it or unscrewing it. It allows you to bleed off some of the suction so you don't get too much suction to the vacuum because if you do that, you're gonna have the vacuum maybe climbing up the walls and going out the side of the pool and out of the water, which makes it suck air and that can be bad and harmful to your pump and your system, okay? So these two adapters are something you're going to wanna use. And remember I said about losing the skimmer function? Theoretically, this 
will help give you some suction on that skimmer area instead of just going to the vacuum hose. But what happens is a lot of the, the leaves will get jammed up in there. So again, you're gonna lose most of your skimmer's function, but not its suction, okay? So keep that in mind. All right, so let's go to a pool and let's talk about disabling the pop-ups and installing the vacuum. Okay, so in order to disable your pop-ups, if for any reason you're one of those fortunate people whose pop-up systems has a dedicated pump, all right? So if you watched my video on pop-up systems or pop-up cleaning systems or in-floor cleaning systems, if you haven't, please watch it. But two of the examples I show you actually have a separate pump that is to get dedicated just for the pop-ups. That's the ideal situation if you're gonna have pop-ups. But again, in order to disable that, that's real simple. You just shut that pump off and make sure that it doesn't turn on ever again and your pop-ups are disabled and that's the end of the situation. So again, that's if you have a dedicated pump, that means it sucks water from the pool and then blows it directly back to the pop-ups only, all right? If that's the case, then just turn off that pump motor, make sure it never comes on again, and your pop-ups are disabled. If you don't happen to be so fortunate and your pool system shares the pop-ups, the pop-up system shares the return flow with the rest of the pool, then I'm gonna show you how we disable those. Okay, this is one of my clients' houses. I've already converted their pool to a pop, I mean their pop-up system to a vacuum system. And if you notice, Again, when you have a pool that shares the pop-ups with everything else in the system, it's one pump, one motor, the water comes in through suction here. I've got this suction off because this was the leaf canister that had all kinds of leaks, so we just shut that suction off. So now all the suction is coming from this port, which is just the skimmer, okay? So I'm having all the suction go to the skimmer. It goes through the pump, up into the filter, out the filter, and this is the return pipe right here. Notice there's returns for the pop-ups this is the return and this is an old valve it's fully open this is for the returns this is for the water feature and whoever manufactured put this pool together they created a valve here so if i happen to shut this valve off here then the water feature goes 100 percent. so i don't want the water feature going 100 percent. so i shut it off there and that means that there's water flow going to the pop-ups but we disable the pop-ups in this one by taking the guts out, okay? A lot of times you'll have a valve for the pop-ups right here, in which case you just shut it off. Then there's no water flow going to that, and the water flow is gonna be redirected to these other areas. Very critical to understand. If you shut the valve off to the water flow for the pop-ups, since in most cases, most of the flow goes back to those if you're running it on a, a, sim a single system. You're going to want to make sure that your return valve, that's the valve to the returns, those are the little ports on the side of the pool where the water flows back in, you're going to make sure that is fully open. If this is closed too much and then you shut this one off completely, you could cause a buildup of pressure in your filter, which could blow the filter, which could be very dangerous, or it could at least damage your filter or your pump. So you want to make sure, again, when you stop the return flow to the pop-ups, you fully open the return flow to the returns. All right, this is an aerator, and you can turn that on if you want, and we'll talk about aerators later. And again, this is the water feature. Now people say, well, why don't I just open up the water feature too? The problem with the water feature flow being open is it creates a lot of current inside the pool. And if you have too much current, it literally can, can cause those, that hose for the vacuum to be pushed away from the area of the waterfall and then the vacuum won't get over to that area near the waterfall, okay? So what I kind of say, yeah, use your water feature when you want to for ambiance and for, you know, for, you know, when you have people coming over and you're entertaining, but usually keep the water feature flow to a minimum, if not off, so that your vacuum can fully get around the pool. Now, in saying that, I want to show you something also. The return ports on the pool, I'm trying to find some, um, this one has kind of some unique ones. But usually with the return ports, you're gonna to have to direct the return ports in the requirement or recommendation of the manufacturer of the vacuum. 
because again with return ports a lot of people sometimes people put the returns to where it swirls the and circles the the current around well that again moves the hoses and can cause the pool vacuum to not get to the areas it needs to get to so most of the manufacturers of vacuums that i have seen in their manuals have told you to take your return ports right those are those little side holes in your pool that the water returns back to and point them down okay and they're fairly easy to do sometimes you need a screwdriver to do it sometimes you need to unscrew the 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 tension uh, ring on it to adjust it but you want to point those down and that keeps the flow going down into the bottom of the pool and doesn't disturb the surface so your vacuum has a good chance of getting all around the pool so keep that in mind all right so again remember to disable these you just stop the return flow to the pop-up heads, all right? And some of these, these things have a pause valve. Remember I had the little toggle in one of my other ones? And you can hit it to pause, and that will stop this stuff inside from turning. Now again, in this one, we just took the guts out of this thing and disabled the whole thing so it's not opening the ports at all. All those ports inside of there are completely closed. But this is fully open, and that's critical so that we don't build up pressure in the pool. But once you've done that, and your return flow is back to the returns and no longer to the pop-ups, your pop-ups are disabled and you're ready to work on installing the vacuum into the skimmer, uh, the skimmer port. So we'll get to that next. Okay, so I am at one of my client's pools who obviously has a dedicated vacuum line or suction line to their vacuum, but I can still use this in order to show you how I would do the conversion if this was a pop-up system since all I need to do is access the skimmer. So let's assume that this was a pop-up system. I've already disabled the pop-ups in the way I described earlier, and I'm gonna go into the skimmer, okay? I'm gonna remove the skimmer basket, and then I look down here, and remember, most skimmers have two holes. And the one that's closest to the back of the skimmer, not the one that's closest to the pool, because remember, that one usually goes to the floor drain and the use of the diverter allows that floor drain to suck but you're going to not have that feature and you're not going to need it because your vacuum is going to be doing the sucking and vacuuming so usually the port or the hole that is closest to the back or the furthest away from the pool itself is the one for the skimmer now you notice that hole is pretty big it's too big for that vacuum hose to fit into i'm going to go grab it and show you Okay, so there's the vacuum hose. I disconnected it from the vacuum port over there, no big deal. And again, when I connect a vacuum through the skimmer, I run it through the skimmer opening like this. And you notice if I put that down in there, it's just way too big. The opening's a little bit too big for that to fit in too snugly and stay in there. That makes sense? So what I'm gonna do, as I told you earlier, I'm gonna take this adapter. I'm gonna push it down into that opening, right? I'm gonna push it all the way down so it's snug in there. Once I have that in there, all I have to do to connect it, right, is to take my hose and plug it in there. However, remember what I said about if your pool has the ability to adjust the suction from the pump area between the skimmer and what we call a leaf canister or leaf vacuum with your pop-up system, then you can do the adjusting there and you don't need this. But if your pool only has one pipe that goes from the skimmer right then you're going to need to use this adjuster so that you don't get so much suction to the vacuum that it sucks the thing and it comes out of the pool right so this would go in to that hole like so right and then you would take then you see how it's in there and then again i'd have to do some adjusting on that blue screw in part to adjust how much suction I bleed off of the vacuum hose. And then I plug the vacuum hose into that, just like that. Now, you can pop the skimmer back in like this and just angle it. And sometimes it'll pull a little bit of debris in there, but it's really, like I said, you kind of lose the skimmer function. But that's pretty much how you do it, right there. Then you fire your system up let it start sucking from the skimmer, and then you start making your adjustments to it. Watch your vacuum. If your vacuum starts coming way too high up out of the sides of the pool, then you're going to unscrew that blue ring down there so that it allows more suction to be diverted to this opening here and less to the vacuum hose. 
Again, if it doesn't move well enough, then you can tighten this blue big nut there, and that will restrict the flow the more you tighten it, and that will create more suction to the hose. And that's pretty much how you do it. Remember, that adapter down there, the adjustable thing, that is being used if you don't have the ability to adjust the suction at the pump by your equipment between the skimmer and say the leaf vacuum, right? And I'll show you an example of that at one of my other clients' pools. I wanted to take a moment and show you an example of a pool that actually has the two suction ports going to the main filter, all right? So when it comes to converting. In this case, this is an example of one of my pop-up system pools that I actually service, and they haven't converted, but this is one of those systems that has, first of all, it has a separate pump. You see that pump and motor right there, the tan one. That one drives strictly the pop-ups. So in order to disable the pop-ups, if you were to convert this pool, just make sure that that motor never comes on. And the way I do that in this particular situation is go to the, the time clock for the cleaning system right there, and I would take the on tab off, and that way this would never come on and that pretty much would disable the pop-ups, all right? But what I really want to show you is an example of a pool that has two suction lines coming into the main pump, which goes into the filter, okay? So remember, if you don't have one of those, I said you're gonna use this adapter, which you'll still use in the skimmer to make sure the hose fits in there. But then you would put this in there to adjust the suction on the skimmer, right? And remember I said, unless, your pool is equipped with a splitter like this where it has a valve that has two suction ports. Now in this particular pool, one suction port is for the skimmer, which is right there. And the other suction port, as I described in my pop-up um, video, and if you haven't seen it, watch that and I'll describe how this particular pool is set up because I use it as an example. That cover right there and there's a hole in the side of the wall inside the pool, and that's basically a leaf vacuum. So it creates suction as the pump's running to pull leaves into that, all right? So that's what these two pipes are for, okay? So in this case, I will not need to use this adjuster, all right? I will still need to put this in the skimmer in that hole where the suction is to make sure that that the hose will fit in there, unless it's small enough that the hose will just fit in there snugly, right? Then, instead of using that, uh, that other adjuster, I can make all my adjustments right here. And I can create more or less suction to the, um, to the skimmer or to the leaf vac. And that allows me to adjust the suction of the vacuum. So again, it moves around the pool thoroughly, it gets up the walls, but it doesn't come out of the water causing it to suck air, all right? Some pools are equipped with spas and the suction's on there and they can do the adjusting that way as well. But I just wanted to show you an example of a system that has the suction adjustment there so that you don't have to use this. Oh, hey, uh, a couple more things that I wanted to touch on. First of all, you might be going, hey, he didn't show us how to put the vacuum in. Well. Honestly, look at the instruction manual that comes with your vacuum. And as far as putting the vacuum together, it's really simple. The vacuum comes fully assembled. It should, if not, get a different one. And it comes with hoses. You just follow the instructions and make sure that when you connect all the hoses together, you connect them long enough so that the, pool, the vacuum can get around the pool. And then also uh, make sure that um, there's sometimes, some of them come with weights or floats. Just attach them according to the instruction manual and the manufacturer's recommendations, and it's that simple. And then again, submerge the vacuum, submerge the hoses, then plug that hose into, into your uh, skimmer port, the adapter, and make sure there's no air in it and you're good to go. Um, the other thing to keep in mind when it comes to the vacuum, um, the hoses come with, the, the, usually it comes with this kind of this, looks like a, uh, like a net, like a clear, or it's like a white um, mesh sleeve that is intended to go on the, the uh, hose, the section of hose that fits into the skimmer. 
The reason it is is because when that hose comes out of the skimmer and goes into the pool, it's coming out that skimmer opening and into the pool, it's going to create a little bit of rubbing. And so that little mesh netting or sleeve is just to create a protective barrier so it doesn't wear out that area of that hose too quickly. So you will want to use that on the section of hose that attaches into the actual skimmer. So keep that in mind. So gang, that's my basic lesson on how to convert a pop-up pool to a vacuum pool. It's pretty simple. Again, you're basically just disabling your pop-ups, making sure that if you have them feeding off the same return of the, the main pump, that you open up the return ports to the returns so that you don't build up pressure in your in your pool system and damage it or cause harm to yourself because it could be dangerous if you blow the filter. And then also just how to use the adapters, all right? Now, there is another way. Remember, as I said earlier, that you're going to lose the skimmer function of the um, skimmer when you adapt your pop-up system to a vacuum, the way I described in this video. There is another way to do it. There's an act actually a product that's on the market that works pretty good. Um, that will help you convert it without losing the skimmer function of it, but still utilizing the skimmer suction. But it's a little bit lengthy, it's a little bit more involved, and so I'm going to describe that in the next episode, all right? So, I thank you for watching. I hope this all made sense. Please review it. Remember to like and subscribe to this channel. Also, if you have any comments or questions, you can post them in the comment section below this video, or if you'd like, as always, you can email me directly. The video, I mean, the email address is going to come right across the screen here. It's kennypoolschool at gmail.com. Once again, kennypoolschool at gmail.com. So again, remember, next episode, I'm going to talk to you how to use a particular product that will allow you to maintain the, suction, the skimmer function while still converting your pop-up system to a vacuum system via the skimmer suction port. So until then, remember as always, have fun, be safe, and always watch those kids around water, and I'll see you next time.